A case trimmer is just a case trimmer, right? Not this time. Gavin Gay here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you the Forster Original Case Trimmer. It's available either just standalone trimmer only or what I have shown here, which is the case trimmer plus a selection of pilots. Pilots are used to center the case in this miniature lathe, which trims cases. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my bench plates here. This is for the Ultimate Reloader bench system. We're gonna get it mounted. We're gonna do some basic case trimming, and then we're gonna take a look at outside neck turning, and we're gonna look at using their three-way cutter to cut, chamfer, deburr, all in one step. Well, let's get going. So to mount the trimmer on the bench, I took one of these Ultimate Reloader bench blocks for this Ultimate Reloader bench system, secured it in place, put the trimmer exactly where I wanted it. And I kind of like the fact that it's up off the bench here because I have a little bit of extra clearance for my hand, which is kind of nice. Put it in place, marked the holes, pre-drilled, and then used the included screws, which just have an Allen head on them, to secure it to the base. Now we can take a look at setting up the trimmer to trim some 6.5 Creedmoor. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is to figure out what collet we're gonna use. And I just looked at the reference sheet. This uses collet number one. These are brown and sharp type collets. They're gonna offer great repeatability with regard to where the case is secured along this axis here, the axis of the cutter. So we're gonna remove the collet holder, insert the collet into the holder, and then screw it in place. Pull this out of the way, and we'll just confirm that we have a nice secure clamp on the case, which we absolutely do. The next thing we need to do is to install the appropriate pilot. This is pilot number 26, which is gonna be appropriate for this particular Lapua 6.5 Creedmoor case. We're gonna push in on this while we tighten the set screw, and that's gonna hold that in place. Now, when we insert a case, we're gonna to wanna to push into the collet and then get the pilot supporting the front of the case, push towards the collet while we clamp it down. Okay, now we need to get the cutter basically touching the case mouth, and then we're gonna take this stop collar here and get it basically rough dialed in here. I'm gonna just push it against the bearing here, which is stationary, tighten the set screw. And what's cool about this case trimmer is we've got a fine adjustment right here. There is a set screw that holds that fine adjustment in place, but basically what happens is this, the set screw here, the fine adjustment screw rather, uh, determines exactly how deep the cutter is gonna go. So if we try a trim now, we're just gonna take off a very minuscule amount. We can take this out now, check it for whatever length that we want to trim, and then Make sure the front is supported here while we clamp it. Still getting used to the way that, uh, that this trimmer works. If we want to increase the depth of cut, we're going to retract this screw ever so slightly. Each turn of that fine adjustment screw is about 32 thousandths of an inch of extra trim depth. Okay? So now we're going to spin the cutter and we're going to see a bit more material come off. What I like to do is I like to take the trim to length as specified for each particular cartridge, each case, and subtract about 10 thousandths of an inch just so that you have a little bit of room to grow. Now we can chamfer and deburr the inside and outside of the case mouth. I'm just gonna walk through five of these to show you what the process looks like for successive cases. This is essentially a hand lathe. And there's a little bit of a technique. I'll show you what I like to do when I'm hand cranking this, this kind of a tool. Again, we're gonna support the front, push in. I like to basically let my hand rotate so that my wrist is essentially staying a little bit more stationary rather than having the hand crank completely each time. And when you get the, the rhythm of it, it's easy to apply torque evenly as it's spinning at whatever speed this is cutting very clean. I like that. Just like that. You just keep cranking until you stop hearing the tool cut more material on there. 
Very simple. Simple type of arrangement, but with a good cutter, with good geometry, works really, really well. Okay, that's the basic trimming process with the Forster uh, original case trimmer. Let's next take a look at the three in one, which is not only gonna trim to length, but it's also gonna chamfer the inside and outside of the case mounts. So this is the three in one case mouth cutter, and it's gonna take only a couple quick steps to install. We're gonna loosen the set screw for the pilot, remove it, and then turn it in. This is gonna put it below the surface because this cutter is gonna slip over the top. We're gonna remove the O-ring that prevents the cutter from protruding from the bearing block. Get this slid on and then tighten the set screw. That's all there is to install the three-in-one case mouth cutter. So now that we've installed the tool, let's set our trim length and trim some cases. Basic idea here is generally the same. We're gonna insert the case into the collet, tighten the collet, that gets our positioning correct along that axis. And I'm gonna bring the cutter up to where it's just starting to contact the case mouth. We'll get the stop block set appropriately. What I'm gonna do this time is I'm just gonna loosen the set screw so we can make successive adjustments to the stop screw. Okay, so we're not really trimming a whole lot yet. I'm gonna back the screw out just a little bit. Trim a little bit more. Okay, I'm starting to see some action there. Let's see what that looks like. Looks really, really nice. So if we're happy with the overall length, which we're gonna measure with digital calipers, we'll just set the stop screw, the depth stop screw, and go ahead and trim some cases. Support the front, clamp the collet, and trim. Look at that. Now we're doing multiple steps in one pass and it's always great to, to save time in that way if you can. Efficiency. And it puts a really nice chamfer on that case mouth. After a few cases, we'll get into the flow. And that's gonna increase our efficiency, of course. Looking good. The Forster outside neck turner accessory is essentially a package that has this feeder cam that controls the infeed, the cam follower, the cutter head, and then for the particular bullet diameter or inside neck diameter that you're going to be turning, there's special pilots for this outside neck turning assembly. And what we're going to do, I'll show you the installation process here real quick, is we're going to go ahead and remove the three-in-one cutter and then remove the cutter and handle assembly. You'll see here in the frame right under the bearing block, there's a little slot and the cam follower actually slides right into there. Now we take the cutter, slide the cam over the cutter head, insert that in. What we'll see here is as we rotate the cam, it follows the cam follower and incrementally changes the position of the cutter shaft in the frame. Okay, now let's get that cutter head installed. We're gonna need to move the stop collar to a different depth when we get this set up in place. So I'm just gonna crack the set screw so that we can now move the shaft a little bit further inward. And for the particular pilot we're using, the 264 pilot, there's a flat on that pilot and we want to get that oriented right towards the set screw which we're now gonna back out so that we can 
insert the pilot into the end of the cutter shaft. Okay, and again, I'm gonna be very careful about where I'm facing that flat so that the set screw will hit the flat. What we'll do is we'll kind of rotate things a little bit while we tighten it to make sure that it's seated in the proper position. Now we can take the outside turning cutter, slide that in place, and tighten down the set screw that holds it to the cutter shaft. Okay, let's get his case installed and we'll get our adjustments dialed in. I'm gonna do this familiar process of getting the pilot into the case neck, tightening things down. And what I'm gonna start with here is I'm gonna take a look at the cam. I'm gonna advance it all the way to the left-hand side here. And when we do that, we're then gonna to wanna to take a look at the position of the cutter on the outside of the case neck. And we're gonna want the stop collar to engage right around that point. Got to get the correct Allen key, of course. Okay, loosen that. Okay, so the cam is all the way at the end of its throw. I've got the cutter approximately where it needs to be there. Get my set screw in the right place here. This is gonna take a little bit of trial and error and experimentation, and we can use that depth stop screw to adjust where things stop. Okay, so now when we go, when we trim, here's what's gonna happen. Actually, I have my <laughs> set screw hitting the frame here. Let's work on that next. We're gonna to want to loosen the set screw for the cutter and then feed the cutter in. I'm just gonna move this here to a position where it's right over the case neck. And we're gonna just feed it in until it contacts and then just a tiny bit more. This is something that you're gonna to wanna to check and set very carefully with something like a tubing micrometer so that you take off just the right amount and you have the appropriate case neck thickness. Okay, so now we should be set up to start trimming. And I'm gonna trimming the outside, turning the outside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start cutting and I'm gonna feed it in and we should see some trimming happening. And what I'm seeing here is the outside of the case neck is just getting cut cleanly all around it looks like. And I'm gonna feed, back feed that while I'm spinning so that I don't get a drag mark. So that gives you an idea, that looks really nice. And again, we can fine tune the cutter depth to take off more material or to take off less material. Sounds complicated and it's a little bit tricky to set up, but once you get the idea of how all of these parts work together, we're gonna get that cam all the way out. Go ahead and feed. Just very slowly rotating the cam until we get to the appropriate spot. Back it out while we're spinning. Another nice case neck. Like anything else, You'll develop your technique, <laughs> you'll speed up as you get more experience with the tool. And this is the first couple times that I've run cases through this. So as I use this tool more, I'm sure that I'm gonna get more efficient as well. Look at that, I'm already getting better. <laughs> it's looking really good as well. Trying to keep my hand out of the way so that you can really see what's happening here. One more time. There we go, next turn. So as you just saw with one case trimming setup, we were able to perform basic trimming, three-in-one trimming, and outside neck turning, all with the Forster original case trimmer and optional accessories. I should note that they also have a power adapter so that if you don't wanna wear your arm out after trimming 
thousands of cases for that upcoming rifle match, you can use a cordless drill or equivalent. Isn't that great? And I'll have an article with more details, links to product pages and so on and so forth. Click on that first link in the video description. What do you think about this trimmer? Do you have one? Please drop a comment. Let's start a discussion. Don't forget, I got Ultimate Reloader shirts at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'm on Patreon. And don't forget to subscribe with notifications because I got a lot more cool related content coming up. Until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.